Amen. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I, I, am, I am delighted. Some of y'all see my grandson, and if he could, he'd be right here right now. But his mama won't let him. But I'll be glad when the day I can hand the mic to him. Oh, y'all hear what I'm saying this morning. Amen. Okay. Because I am, I'm going to give him, I never had love for my grandfather. I'm preaching already. Can y'all handle this? <laughs> and uh, so, you know, my dad was a strong father figure in my life, but my dad didn't know how to show love in an affectionate kind of way. His love was tough, you know, straighten up, do right, right? I'm not begrudging him. That's just the way he was raised. I get that. Amen. Some of y'all can relate to that. But that little boy and I, he brought me his little Hulk. Because I'm Hulk and he's, he's Spider-Man. And <laughs> I think I'm kidding. You know, I, I went out, uh, I went out uh, just messing around. I had to try some, some new rods and reels out. You can't keep fishing with old equipment. Right? If you're going to catch something, you better have good equipment. So I had to make sure my equipment was going to be ready for when I do get out there and get serious. And my wife called and said, Dominic is on his way. Stephanie's bringing him over to the park. I was just around the corner from the house. I wasn't really doing nothing. And I looked up, and there he was, and Mama was waving, and, you know, he was, Papa! I could barely hear him, but I could hear him. When you cry out to your father, he hears your voice. No matter how faint it is, because his love is great. As much love as I have for him and he has for me, God's love for you and I is greater than that. And so I, I stopped what I was doing. I heard the voice, I stopped what I was doing, and went over there to make sure I met him on the way so he didn't have to walk all the way. God's not making you walk all the way to him. He's already on his way to you. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. Hallelujah. Well, beyond mic troubles, this is the last week we're going to have mic troubles, gentlemen. If I have to fix it myself, we're going to not have no more mic troubles. I can't stand it because it's hard for me to preach with this thing. But that's okay, that's okay. God's got this. Isn't that right? Turn with me in your Bibles. Last week we talked a little bit. Uh, we continued on in our topic to uh, rest, from restoration uh, to harvest, and we're going to continue with that, and I think we're on part five now. I want to, while you're turning there, while you're turning in your Bibles, and once you turn in your Bibles, I didn't give you a place to turn, did I? Turn to Hebrews uh, chapter two. And I want to greet our, our YouTube audience. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, those of you that are out there watching via YouTube, however you're seeing this, whether you're seeing it live stream or whether you're seeing it later, we're delighted that you took the time to tune in. I recognize that it is a new world, new age that we live in, and in so doing, many times, many of you have chosen to fellowship from home. We invite you, though, to come in because we are a living, breathing group of people, and we we crave your touch just because, you know what, we know that it, it takes all of us, it takes a village to raise a child, so to speak. And what we're endeavoring to do is just continue to love one another in the fellowship of the saints. The Bible says in the, in the writing of Hebrews, it says, forget not or don't forsake the fellowship or the gathering yourselves together as the manner of some is. So don't be somebody who just stands off on the edges and watches. If you're in the local area, we are located in Coralville, Iowa, uh, on the corner of I-80 and, and 1st Avenue at 1221st Avenue. We love to have you come we're at the we're at the radisson hotel and conference center come on down we've got a seat of warm welcome for you we delighted be delighted if you come but if you're not coming get something to write with get yourself in a comfortable position get the word of god and cut out all distractions and hear from god this morning ladies and gentlemen would you walk welcome our youtube audience this morning we do have, as I look around the room, we do have a couple first-time guests. We're certainly delighted. I think they're first-time guests. We're delighted that you're here. And so we recognize it's tough to come out to a church. And, and you know, when you come out to a church, you just never know what to expect, especially when you come for the first time, right? Many of us that come, and we've been here more than once, we're not always sure what we're going to expect when we get here. Isn't that right? So what it speaks to is our own development and our own desire to be used by God and to hear God and to, for God not just to bless us, but to bless the people that are around us. But we're delighted that you're here. Thank you for coming. Would you welcome our first-time guests this morning? From the, book of, from the book of Hebrews, the second chapter, if you have it, say amen. Here, we read, I read just a little bit about this last week, and I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time here this time, but I just want you to hear just a couple things because it goes in line. That's why I asked them to sing this song. I didn't know what they were going to sing. I never know 
whatever the Lord lays on their hearts to sing. And many times it's in concert with what the Lord has already given me. So if you'll just pray with me this morning, we're going to go ahead and get into the word and we'll get you in and get you out and just trust God for the results. Can we do that? Amen. So Hebrews 2, from Hebrews 2, the, uh, the 10th chapter, the Bible says that God is the one who made all things, and all things are for his glory. Do you see that? He says, it says, through whom and for whom all things exist. He wanted to have many children share his glory. Do you see that? Now, your Bible might read a little bit different from mine. I'm reading from the expanded Bible, but I think you get the same context. Is that all right? He says he wanted to have many children to share his glory, so he made the one who leads people to salvation perfect through suffering. Now, most of us don't understand that Jesus, the Bible says that he was made perfect through sufferings. He did not suffer as an as a evildoer, right? He did not suffer by doing wrong. He suffered the separation of being away from his heavenly father for a season to be able to bring change into the earth. Can you say amen to that? Now, I'm going to say some things today. I hear, I really sense a strong anointing along this line. And it might be a little bit out there for some of you that aren't fully mature in faith. And you may not understand this or see this about yourself. But I want to show you. I, want to, I believe by God's grace I'll be able to show you that what God is doing in you, he's doing it in such a way that you have, almost have to ask yourself the question, what kind of vessel am I? Because if you don't know what kind of vessel you are, you will miss God's best. Okay? Now, I'm going to submit to you, and I'm going to prove it in just a minute, that each one of us is a vessel. I know that's hard on our, on our natural mind, our natural intellectual gifted uh, added to learning, just building upon all of the things that we know and we think we know more than, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing that when I was 19, I knew more than my dad. You know, and when I became 30, I realized I didn't know anything. And then when I became a father, I realized I knew less than that. Amen. But, but many of you, what we've done is we've come to the place where we think we know, we know things that God hasn't necessarily given you to know. In other words, you should never know what it is to experience divorce. Okay, I, I better, I, y'all ready? You should never know what it is to experience bankruptcy. You should never know what it is for somebody to lie to you. You should never know what it is for somebody to cheat on you. You shouldn't have to know this, but yet we do, amen? Yet we do, and I'm not, I'm not throwing stones at that. What I'm saying to you is that God did not design for those things to be a part of who you are. It's just the reality of living in this world. God did not design for you to have diabetes. God did not design for you to suffer from glaucoma or, or any other disease, mental illness. He didn't design us for that. Come on now. He didn't design Jesus for it. He didn't design us for it. However, because Jesus was a man, he was all man and all God, he had to go through the challenges of what it means to be human. Say amen to that. In, in going through that, though, he wasn't going through it because he did wrong. He was going through it because he had to set an example of what it looked like for victory to be, be, be available to each one of us. Are you hearing me this morning? So with that being said, when we look at the life of Jesus, we need to stop looking at it from a standpoint of, of who he was, God, but rather who he is. Because the Bible says that he is the same yesterday today and forevermore so if he was the king of glory and the prince of peace and the bright and morning star then he is still that in reality now here is the question is he in that inside of me all right do i have i think i got your attention let, let uh I love what the song says the song had a couple verses in there one of them says when i trust you i don't need to understand Understanding, the Bible, I know, the Bible says that, that, that wisdom is the principal thing and all that getting it understanding. But, but understanding, for the, for the, to me, for the uh, modern day church, particularly the Western church, has become more important than faith. Because faith, the Bible says, is the substance of things hoped for. It does not say that understanding is the substance of things hoped for. It does not say that if I figure it out first, then I can do the will of God. But it says that faith is the, is the substance of things hoped for. Am I, am I, am I in the word somebody? Now, what, what, what God does is he says that, that faith, without faith, it is impossible to please him. He does not say the same thing about understanding. So we cannot afford to get the two twisted. 
And what we look for is we look for understanding. I don't know why my wife chose to leave me. I don't know why my husband decided that he didn't love me anymore. I don't know why my daughter passed away and went to heaven early. I don't know why my kids aren't serving God. But it is not your, it is not your understanding that gets you to the point of victory. It is the faith that it says that though these things are against me, God is greater than what I see going on in my life. And when I fill my cup up, when I fill my, 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 my body up, my vessel up with doubt and unbelief, it's hard to eradicate that stuff and get it out of the way. Because when I wake up in the morning and I feel fatigue in my body and I feel just, I just don't have the oomph for the get up and go, the first thing the devil wants to do is barrage me with all of these things that are going on inside of me. Come on, somebody. But what God says is he said if you approach it from the understanding that whatever is in you right now that comes from me is more than enough yeah. to counteract what the devil's trying to put in you. Yeah. Are you all right this morning? Yeah. Turn with me. Turn with me to 2 Timothy. I got to take my time because 2 Timothy 2. Now, when I preach the gospel... I have, to, I have to have a, a, a revelation, a revelatory moment, okay? You know, you know, I mean, I don't know how people see me. I really don't care, Leah. I'm going to be honest with you. I really, really don't care. And it's taken a long time for me to get to the place where I don't care what people think about me. Are you feeling me this morning? Why? Because, see, I have to face the same challenges that you have to face every day. Yeah. Woo, glory to God. I have to wake up in the morning knowing that God is on my side. I have to wake up with the understanding that greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. I have to wake up with the belief, not just understanding, but the knowledge that I have been made the head and not the tail. So, so from 2 Timothy 2, let's turn, turn down to verse 20. You have it? Verse 20. Gentlemen, you can put up the King James Version if you have it, whoever's on the Gemini or ladies. Don't want to assume anything. Ladies, amen. 2 Timothy 2, verse 20. You have it? Say amen. amen. My Bible says, in a large house, a wealthy household, there are not only things or vessels, dishes, made of gold, which implies that there are golden vessels, right? And silver. So there's silver added there. So we got two, right? Write down gold and silver. But also vessels or dishes made of wood. Okay, that's three, right? And what? Clay or earth, same thing, right? Clay. Some things, now we've got four classifications of vessels. Let's go through them again. Gold, silver, wood, and clay. Some things are used for special or honorable or noble purposes, and others are made for ordinary, what he says, dishonorable, ignoble jobs, such as <laughs> garbage, Right? Verse 21. Listen to this verse. I want you to write it down. I want you to underline it, highlight it, whatever you do in your Bible, because it's extremely important to where I'm going today. All who make themselves clean from evil. Right? He talks about the fall, and he's referring to the false teaching described in, the, in earlier verses in 16 through 18, will be used for special, honorable purposes. They will be made holy, useful to the master. Ready to do any good work. And you can read on from there. Verse 22 says, but flee and run away from any evil work. Look up at me, please. The writer here is telling us, Paul is telling Timothy, as the pastor, young pastor that he is, he's telling him, say, listen, you have to first recognize, not just because he was the pastor of the Ephesians church, but you have to recognize that he's talking on the household level. Can we start there this morning? Are you going to help me this morning? Y'all going to look at me. Amen. He starts at the household level, recognizing that the greatest unit that God ever made was a man and a woman. And he put them collectively together so that they could be fruitful and multiply on the earth. Am I right about it? So in starting there, he makes sure, and, and, and the Bible's clear, I don't have time to go through it all today, but he, he removes the woman from the side of Adam, from the rib, we know that, but he doesn't make the woman less than Adam, he makes her a co-partner in successful life. 
Say amen to that. So as he's doing this, he's planting something inside of them that they don't even recognize what it is. The Bible is clear that what they do is they start out as being these beings who have no breath in their body, but God decides, because he's God, to breathe in them the, 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 the life-giving power of his nature. In other words, he doesn't just, if you were to look at the body of the, of the human, of the man, if, if, you, if God didn't hold it up, it would just be like a rag dog. Can y'all see that? There's no life. There might be bones in it. There might be sinew and there might be vessels, but there's no life in it. So anything that has no life in it is dead. Y'all didn't say that like you knew it, but, you know, go visit a funeral home and there's no life. There's somebody there laying. Okay, I know we don't like to talk about death. I know that. Okay, this is not a message about death. Just stay with me. So anyway, God breathes into Adam the power, and the Bible clearly says that he breathes in him to breath the breath of life. So now what Adam has the responsibility of doing by the direction of God is to lead the woman as they co-lead this thing, be fruitful and multiply, and now they have the right to touch and do everything in existence except one thing, which is what? Come on, say it like you know it. Come on, this is interactive. Don't eat from the tree of what? The knowledge of good and evil. Now, why am I saying that? Because God, now listen, somebody said, well, they couldn't touch the tree. Well, if they couldn't touch the tree, they couldn't steward the garden. God never said that. He never said you couldn't touch it. He said don't eat from it. Now, with that being said, what happens is because the deceiver is always, now we're talking about from restoration to harvest, because the deceiver is always, he was already present in the earth realm, he comes in, in the, through the body of a serpent, and what does he do? He brings in knowledge or understanding that does not line up with the word that they heard. God, help me this morning. And so when, when, Peter, when, when uh, Paul admonishes Timothy, and he says here, he says, flee from those places that that give you give you teaching that is not true doctrine or not true on true true information so in other words satan comes and he interjects his little bit of understanding into the mind of eve eve the bible says was deceived her husband was not but her husband didn't stop the deceiver he went along with the plan and the next thing you know something comes inside the vessel that does not line up with what god's word says and so now because it's not lined up with what god's word says there is this thing called Sin. Come on now. And so sin enters the earth and sin pollutes the whole thing. Now, I don't, I think you all know this. You're smarter, smart enough to know this. If you don't, don't raise your hand. But the Bible says that for all have sinned and come short of what? It does not say come short of the understanding. Nor does it say come short of the faith of God. It says come short of the glory of God. So that tells me that the glory of God is still available to those people who can reach out and touch it by faith. Are you with me? So now, let's fast forward. We've got the, we've got the household unit. And I won't touch the, the 21st century household unit because it's in many ways really jacked up. It is very, very kind. So let's move to the next category. Let's, let's, let's go to the extended family for a moment. Can we do that? Are y'all right with this? Can I, can I, can I, I won't take my time, but I don't have much time, so I got to expedite. So if I ask you if you're okay with it, I'm not waiting for you to respond. I'm just going on, okay? So, so, so what happens now is in the extended family, God recognizes that he's got to do something to fix this thing. He's got to do something to get the contaminant out of the life of mankind. The contaminant is sin. Man in his own understanding, will say Eve in this case, Eve in her understanding reaches out to something that God has already set as off limits and now because she's, she's misunderstanding, she's opened a door or a portal to her heart, really to her soul that causes her to, 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 to really affect the entire, entire mankind, the human race. And she doesn't know it. Think about this for a minute. What is it that you could possibly do in your lifetime that might affect your entire generational line? 
Who is it that you weren't supposed to be with, that you shouldn't have looked at, you shouldn't have texted her, you shouldn't have texted him, you shouldn't have called him, you shouldn't have followed up, you know, you knew it was inappropriate, you knew you shouldn't have done this, but you did. And it, somehow or another comes in you, and because it comes in you, somehow or another you can't shake this thing on your own, and it, it affects the way you think for the rest of your life. Remember the testimony that, that, that Dr. King got up and gave? You know, when she talked about how, how, you know, she began to see herself differently, which ultimately causes her to see all things differently, which helps us to begin to see God the right way. I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm losing y'all this morning. I got to be careful. I got to. <laughs> so, 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 I know. Thank you, honey. So, we move on to the next level. And now what happens is the extended family. So, God chooses an unlikely candidate by the name of Abram. And Abram is a guy like you and I. He's not a superhero. He's not Papa Hulk or Dominic Spider-Man. I mean, he is really a man who, if you catch Abram at the wrong moment in a tent with the wrong woman, you might wonder if he's even hearing God in the first place. I can't go no deeper than that because some of y'all have to fill in the blanks yourself. But, but, but what God does is he tells, he tells Abram, listen, I'm going to bless you. I am, he introduces himself. I am the almighty God, right? And I'm just, just grazing through this. And he says, hear me, believe me, and do what I ask you to do, in essence. Can I say that? Is that okay? And Abram says, okay, I will. And so in the process of doing that, God is really not just looking to bless Abram. He's looking to bless everybody that will come through Abram. Because Abram is a vessel that God has to put his presence on in order for that vessel to be effective in the earth. I can't stand this thing. In order for, stand up. In order for him to be effective for all of his line, God has first got to change him from the inside out. He's not looking necessarily to change the pump, the blood pump, that's great, and the lungs that breathe air and the kidneys that he's, that's all part of the package, but that's not what he came for. Many of us struggle with healing like it's somehow another something we got to get from God. He's already given it to you. If, it, but, but, but rather what he has to do with Abram, he says, listen, I got to change the way you think about who you are in order to get me on your mind. Mm. So, you so what does he do? He tells him, look up at the stars. Can you number the stars? Now, God didn't show him the stars in broad daylight. Y'all, y'all don't even believe that. Right? Because you can't see them. God... He takes him outside and says, come look, look at all the grains of sand around you. Can you number them? No, that's what I'm doing in you. But if I can't get you to see it, I can't get you to have it. What you cannot see, you cannot receive. So, so he even goes so far as to change his name from the father of a multitude to the father of many nations. So, okay, let's move on. So the extended family now, now there's a blessing that comes upon Abraham. Come on, come on, say it with me. Abraham. So, so it is a generational blessing that comes because one man stands in the place of faith. Listen to me well. He does not stand in the place of understanding. He moves into the realm of understanding when his wife says, this thing ain't happening fast enough for me. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> and so she says, how about this? You need to always be aware, acutely, spiritually, and also emotionally aware when somebody says they got a better plan than God. <laughs> Why don't you go into my handmaiden, and maybe she can produce something for you, and we can call that our own. Y'all ain't saying amen, but y'all know I'm right about it. And because of that act, there is now a conflict that is raging in the Middle East, even as we speak, that has gone on for generations untold because one man understood God more than he had faith to believe God. 
Am I right about it? So now we fast forward, moving forward. And we, we pray for the nation of Israel today. My God, they are under attack. I better stop there because I better stop there. Okay. I, 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 not because I ain't got nothing to say, but I got to time it the right way. Can you say amen to that? Amen. So in the great house, let's go back to that, 2 Timothy 2. There are what kind of vessels? There's gold, there's silver, there's wood, and what else? Clay. Let's, let's talk about what a golden vessel looks like for a minute. Now, I don't have any gold. We don't have any gold vessels in our house, do we? Gold utensils. That ain't gold. <laughs> I don't know. You might have some gold. I don't, I don't have any gold. Because if I had gold, it would be just what the Bible says. I'd use it for only the best of guests. And I don't know about you. I got so much stuff in my house. Now, I ain't really trying to have nothing that's just sitting there looking good. Only thing I want looking good in my house is my wife and myself. Everything else can come in second, Robin. You feel what I'm saying? Everything else can come with, you know, the dog. Even the dog gets haircuts because he got to look good too. But, 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 but with that being said, the gold vessel is very special and unique, right? But most of us don't have a concept, nor do we utilize gold vessels. So let's, let's go to the next one. Let's talk about silver for a minute. Silver, hmm, pure silver is very um, expensive and and it can be used, but it's also very pliable. You know what I'm talking about? Pure silver can be bent very easily. It can be damaged and dinged and dented. And some of us have silver tea sets. And, and uh, you know, I used to know some of the more expensive ones, but because we don't use them, I don't know them. So, you know, but there's expensive silver place settings that you use. But when do you use them? You use them for an honored guest. You know, a special guest, you know. Hey, honey, who's coming to dinner? Pastor Tommy. Well, let's pull out the wood. I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I shouldn't have said it. I'm just kidding. I just couldn't resist. I couldn't help myself. Okay. You know, let's pull out the gold. Yeah. You know. But, 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 the, but the, 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 the silver vessel, and, and the Bible is clear through many references about silver, about how significant it is in the word of God. And again, I don't have time to go through it. I'm not going to list. You can search it for yourself. Just go do a search for the word silver and the vessels and so on and so forth. And then there's another type of vessel. It's called what? Wood. Wood. The wood vessel is a vessel that really is easily, it's easily um, acquired. Right? Do we have any wood vessels? We got that China stuff or not even China, ceramic. They call it, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, but we don't have any wood. We got we have any wooden spoons? I don't think we have any wooden spoons anymore. Okay, I think I broke the last one chasing Prince. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I just want to make sure y'all still awake. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Some of y'all are like, he chases his dog. No, I don't. Um, so I don't have any wood. But what I have an abundance of is clay. Some of my clay is painted white, right? And we buy it from an expensive store. You know, I remember when we moved here, we bought this brand new uh, uh, China set. You know, this says China, but it ain't really China. It's really doctored clay. We use it frequently. Now, now, now what, it, what the Bible does not say, uh, y'all stick with me, is that okay? It doesn't say much, doesn't say anything in the Bible about plastic, okay? So, so, so. and we all know we got Tupperware, and we got stuff, you know, I'm just saying. So, we, we'll scratch that one, okay, because the Bible don't mention that one, all right? It wasn't in existence, amen. All right, all right, anyway. So, so, so but from a, from a usable standard of efficiency and effectiveness in my house, most of what we use, again, scratching plastic, is clay of some sort or another. Okay, now, let's, let's, let's look at that word. Let's, let's go through it a little bit, but let's look at that word from another passage of Scripture. I want you to turn to 2 Corinthians 4, verse 7. Are you with me? 2 Corinthians 4, verse 7. Very familiar passage of scripture. You guys all know this. Most of you do. I, I believe most of you do. May not all, but Excuse me. you have a say, amen. amen. Now, it's, it says here, again, Paul writes, he says, well, let me, can I back up? Let me back up to, to uh, verse 4. The devil who rules this world, what? Now, it's talking about the God of this age, right? Who actually rules the world? Who actually rules the world? Say it louder. Who said I can't hear? We do. 
We actually are the ones who rule this world. We've allowed the devil to rule it. He is the God of the age, but he is not the God that rules the world. He rules the world outside of those submitted to Jesus Christ. That makes a difference because that way he can't just put a disease on you whenever he feels like it. Are you feeling me? Because we are under the submission and the servitude of the blood of Jesus, who is the king of kings and is the Lord of lords. So he says the devil, uh, the devil here who rules this world or world age is a better way to say that has blinded the minds of those who do not believe. Right. They cannot see the light of the good, of the good news or the good news about the glory of Christ. Now, remember when we, we talked about that glory last time was when Adam and Eve encountered it in, in Eden, right? Who is exactly like God. Do you see that? Jesus is exactly like God. We do not preach about ourselves, but we preach that Jesus Christ is Lord and that we are your servants for Jesus. Say amen to that. Verse 6, God who said, let the light shine out of darkness is the same God who made his light shine in our hearts by letting us know or letting us see the glory of God that is in the face of Christ. Hold your place. Look up at me. He did not release understanding to you. He released faith to you and revelation to you. Revelation is greater than understanding. If you, if you have somebody, and I've encountered it several many times, maybe some of you have, if I've got somebody that I'm ministering to on a, on a lengthy basis and, and I'm talking to them about healing and, and they're standing up in front of me talking about healing and they're saying, well, you know, I got this, I got that, I got this, I got that. What do you think I have to do before they can get healed? <coughs> Tell them to shut up. Now, if I stood up here and told most people to shut up, you'd leave out of church because you'd be offended. Right? I'm not trying to get them to shut up because I'm, I'm trying to get them to stop talking because what they're saying is not, not the light of God's word that has shined into their heart. You can't, I, heard, I, used, I remember Dad Hagen used to say, you can't talk crosswise with the word of God and get God's results. Amen. Can't talk poverty and, and expect to be prosperous. You can't talk healing and all you do, I mean, you can't talk sickness and, and, and expect healing. It doesn't work. So what he's saying is that God has shined into their hearts the revelation knowledge or revealing to them who God is. Right? We read that earlier. Now what God is doing is he's taking understanding. When I walk up to God as an empty vessel, when I walk up to God, and when I say empty, I'm a sinner, okay? I'm a sinner. I'm not saved yet. I'm a sinner. When I walk up to God as a sinner, I'm empty. Even the stuff that's on board is of no significance to the kingdom of God. Pray with me. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. Great is the Lord. Greatly to be praised. I praise you, Father. Let your glory fill this place. Let revelation knowledge come to, your, to the hearts of your people. Take me to the next level that you prepared for me in this, in this message, Father. I believe I receive when I pray. In Jesus' name. When I come to God, no matter what I have, can, can I, I'm going to not use your name, but I'm going to use your best friend, okay? I don't know if she's watching. I don't know if she will watch, but I'm not going to mention her name, so it doesn't matter. Her best friend is an accomplished woman in the natural. She's gone to fine schools, uh, has, I don't know, two, three, how many? Three degrees. Three degrees and works at a very high level in education, okay? If she were to walk up to God right now, never having submitted her life to Jesus Christ, when God looks at her, he looks at her as an empty vessel. Why? Pull your religious toes in. He doesn't need the three degrees to be able to accomplish his will. He doesn't need her portfolio because she's a, she's a wealthy woman. He doesn't need all the land and houses that she's acquired over the years 
because what he needs is to get his revelation as to who, who she is and why was she was created into her heart. Yes. Would you agree with that? Okay. From that premise, what happens when she or when any of us walk up to God, we walk up to God, and I say that in the sense of like, like we come down to an altar call. I'm just saying like that. My wife met, met God, met Jesus in, her, in the, her bedroom at 16 years old, okay? So you might have met him. I'm assuming that, okay? But when we walk up to God, the best thing we can do is recognize that, God, I have nothing. I'm going to take another degree. I am nothing. Most of us struggle with identity crisis in the church. We struggle with it not because we are not valuable. Come on now, don't get it, don't get it wrong. But we put our value in the wrong place because no longer, the same writer, no longer when I come to God, I recognize that if anything can be used by him, whether it was, whether it was previous to my coming to him or not, if it can be used by him, it is submitted to him so that he can make me a vessel that is ready to be used. I'm, I'm going to keep going just for a minute. I, 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 you guys are with me, amen? So... He says here, he says, verse 7, but we have this treasure from God. Why? I'm at verse 7, 2 Corinthians 4, 7. We are like clay jars or earthen vessels, your Bible probably says, that hold what? The treasure. This shows that the great power is from God, not from us. Right? Why? Because verse 8 brings it into context. Verse 8 says, we have troubles all around us, right? But we are not defeated. Good place to say amen. King James Bible might say crushed, right? We do not know what to do or we are perplexed, but we do not give up. Another good place to say amen. The hope of living, right, and despair, we are continually persecuted, but God does not leave us, right? We are hurt sometimes, but we are not destroyed, yeah. right? Yeah. Why? Because he goes on to say, I'm going to skip down to verse 11, we are alive, but for Jesus we are always in danger of death so that the life of Jesus can be seen in our bodies that die. So death is working in us, but life is working in you. Uh, excuse me. Death is working in us, but life is working in you. So what, what is he saying? He's saying that I'm not, I'm not scared of dying a physical death. It means nothing. What I am doing is I am, I am choosing to crucify myself. In other words, I put myself on the place of the cross because Jesus already did it so that he can live through me so somebody else can be blessed. I got one more passage of scripture. Can you handle that? Turn to Jeremiah 18 for me. That song said, make me whatever you want me to be. Came here with nothing, right? Now, Jeremiah 18. And I'm going to let that be my last passage. When you have it, say amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hmm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. And look up at me when you have it, please. I know you said amen, but look up at me. Gentlemen, or ladies, excuse me, would you put up um, the King James Version and just, just darken it for a minute. Don't just get it ready and then put it up in a second. Jeremiah 18. One. Right at one. Look up at me. Now, I'm, I'm going to tell y'all a tale, a true story, not a, not a lie, I don't lie, about my reality, okay? Can I do that? I can't speak to your reality because I don't know, and I'm not going to speak to my wife's reality because that's her job. In the church, I told you I really didn't understand until I started pastoring. In the church world, there is a, um, I, I don't know if the right word is dichotomy, but I could use it, I think. 
I won't, wait, won't say polar opposites, but this is more of a dichotomy. There's, there's, a, there's a, uh, a challenge between two realities. Paradox. paradox. Who said it? Thank you, dear. Thank you, Tristan. There's a paradox that goes on because when we come to church, when we come to church, no matter what church you go to, whether this is your church or whatever church you go to, we come to church to serve God. That's why we're supposed to be here, right? And in coming to church to serve God, I need, can, you, can I get somebody to pull this back for me? Don't pull it all the way back, but I need to walk here for a minute. Just pull it right into this area. I, I really sense a real presence of God as I walk through here. Thank you. That's good. <clears throat> and the paradox stems from our lack of revelation about who God is. The, that's the starting place. The starting place is that when I went to Sunday school as a little kid or VBS or whatever, I went there because I was made to go, not because I wanted to go. And anything you get made to do does not necessarily benefit you in the long run. Okay? There has to be a want to. And I, to me, that's one of the main problems with our school system. The kids are going there because they're made to, not because they want to. The kids that want to usually succeed. The kids that are forced and pushed, eventually they might get it, but a lot of them, there's no value there. So if we would change and look at the system differently, I think we'd be more successful. I can say the same thing about just about any institution there is. I can say the same thing about prison. Most people that go to prison don't volunteer to go. And so while they're there, they have to find value in being there or they were gonna come, they're going to come out the same way or, or, or really worse than when they went in. Because they have been, something has been forced on them that they've not understood the value of. And so as a result, they only get minimal return on their investment. Okay? Now, let's put that in context of the church. The church, for most people, has been something that before you, before you got here, I'm taking into account life point people that I know, you came here because you want to be here. You're getting something out of this, I hope. Because if you're not, you shouldn't be here. Okay, that's the reality of this. But when you come here, before you came here, maybe you went to first you know what church, like I did. And when I went to first you know, you know what church, I went there, first of all, we stayed in church all day. And even as a 10-year-old boy, that wasn't cool. So when I got to be 21, it wasn't happening. Are you feeling me? The last place I was going to do was enter a church. Now, I'm, I'm putting all the other stuff that happened to me on the side. I'm just saying I had no desire for God. Now, that didn't mean that I didn't have, listen, an understanding of God. But my understanding was limited at best. It simply was not sufficient to cause me to get up out my bed and go to church. Y'all ain't hear me this morning. And so what happened was there came a day in my little, little happy life because I'm still a vessel. I'm full of junk, but I'm still a vessel. I got, we got, you know, how many of y'all got a junk drawer at your house? Don't even raise your hands. Don't lie. You know you got one. You know, where all that stuff just goes and collects in there because you really don't have a purpose for it. And so what happens is I was living life without a purpose for living. And so in my lack of purpose for living, I was really dying. And the devil was doing his best to, to help accelerate that process. In many ways, some of y'all can relate to what I'm talking about. So what happens is because God is God, the whole, whole uh, uh, context, listen to me well, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not apologizing for what I'm saying. If you want to write me an ugly letter, you can write it. Don't mean I'm going to read it, but you write it. Everything in your life is still under the watchful care of the Almighty. Yeah. Even for those that are out there and don't understand that he's doing it. Yeah. Especially for those who don't understand he's doing it. There will come a day when all of the houses of God that call out upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ will be overflowing because there is more revelation coming than there is understanding. So in the understanding of this thing, I had to come to a place at age 20, 29, I had to come to a place where now I'm in such despair, my vessel is over, overloaded with junk, and now junk is spilling out, is spilling out on his life, on his life, on my kid's life, on my wife's life, junk is just, just coming from everywhere. I still think I'm okay, but God now has a plan for that vessel filled with junk. So what does he do? He sends, <laughs> he sends his Holy Spirit and he allows, I'll say what y'all want, he allows a volcanic eruption to disrupt my place of comfort and send me to some place I don't want to be. He's not the author of it, but he allows it because when it's all said and done, Tommy's not going to die, Lynette's not going to die, but I'm going to relocate them because where I'm getting ready to relocate them is the place that they need to be. 
And so when I'm in this place, I'm in Fayetteville, North Carolina, and I don't want to be there. Here comes the Holy Ghost. Here comes the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit comes, and he's dealing with me, and I don't know why. What he's actually doing is he's taking little pieces of junk out of my life, and he's causing me to be dissatisfied with all the way I've been living. I don't know what's going on. I think I'm just losing my mind. And so what happens now is he's got to get me from the place where I think I'm losing my mind and going crazy. And he sends this thing called the word. God help me this morning. His word comes along in the, in, 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 in the presence of a, a cassette tape and says, here, take this, listen to it. I didn't know what to expect. I didn't even want to hear it. But Holy Spirit had come. His word had come, and now what is happening, because the Bible says there are three that bear record in heaven. Help me this morning. The Father, the Word, and the Spirit, and these three are one. So when I'm on course with the Holy Spirit, when the Word comes to my heart, all of a sudden there's something that begins to happen in my life supernaturally that I don't even realize is going on. It's called the work of the potter. The work of the master is going on, and he's beginning to change me. My paradox now is that I'm on a wheel and in the presence of God and I don't even know it and most of us resist that place because that place is not comfortable ah do you have Jeremiah 18 Jeremiah 18 verse 1 give me the King James the word stop right there I told you this is what happened the spirit is already there. So the word has to come to Jeremiah. Do you hear what I'm saying? So the word comes to Jeremiah. The word came to me. The Bible says in Romans 10, it says, how can they hear except there be a what? Preacher. And how can they preach except they be sent? My God, without the word, you have no basis for faith. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, come on. Arise and go down to the potter's house. Now stay with me. Don't move until I tell you to. And there I will cause thee to hear my words. He's talking to Jeremiah, but he's talking to us too. You are not here today because you made some great hot decision about you just want to change your life. The word had to come to you, my God. And the word comes in so many different ways. It comes in ways that we're not looking for. The word comes to be able to change who you are from the inside out. Are you with me? And in changing you, what God does is he sends somebody. Oh, my God. And he, and he just comes to bring a word of testimony. Get up, get up, get up, get up. He, he stands there. He's on the work on his job. And he's there. He's a representative. He's a vessel who has a little bit of revelation. God has pulled all the junk out of his life and put in new, new revelation. My God. He's cleaned him up from the inside out. And now he's got something to say to somebody. And what the devil tries to do is shut your mouth because you think that it's you and not God. And if he didn't speak to that person, they might miss heaven. Stand up, stand up, stand up. And, and you can sit up. What, what God does is he takes this, oh my God, this bus driver. He takes him from a farmer to a bus driver. Who wants to do that? I'm just saying, okay? Thought I was retired. No, nope, not according to God. He puts something in him that's going to be useful for somebody else because you are merely the vessel. You are the one that God puts his spirit in and upon so that when you speak, lives are changed. And all of a sudden, the power of God shows up to somebody who can't even say amen, who cannot raise their hands, but all they can do is stop and look at you because they hear the voice of the mighty God coming out of you. Oh. Listen, Go down to the potter's house and there I will cause thee to hear my words. Come on, come on, come on. Verse 3. Then I went down to the potter's house. And behold, the word wrought means worked. He worked a work on the wheels. Listen, 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 listen. Hallelujah. I'm getting happy now, so y'all have to. The wheel. Is significant of our life. Yeah. Hallelujah. From the time I was born. To the, to the place I am now, my life has been like a wheel. 
that has been spinning. I go from one birthday to the next. I go from one disappointment to one victory. I go from one victory to one disappointment. I Sometimes I'm up and sometimes I'm down. Many times I feel like I'm just on a dizzying pace that nobody understands what's going on. Oh, God, help me this morning. Nobody sees that part of me because when I'm in the church, I say hallelujah. I say glory to God. I tell God how awesome he is. But when I'm home, I feel the weight of the potter's hand on my life. God, help me this morning. And it is not in the challenges of the day-to-day existence that cause you to fail or succeed. It is the understanding that where I am right now is where I'm supposed to be. I'm not supposed to be in North Carolina or Texas or some other place. I'm supposed to be in the house of the Lord right here, right now. So he worked at work on the wheels. Come on, one more. Come on, come on, come on. Listen, and the vessel that he made of clay, we just read it over 2 Corinthians 4. The vessel that he made of clay was, oh God. I can't, I'm, I'm struggling here this morning. Not because I just don't know how to say it. Hallelujah. When I looked at my life, And I thought my life had no value. It wasn't that I had no value. It wasn't that there wasn't something of of great quantity and, and potential use in God. But there was a lack of revelation about how God could change this vessel from a vessel of being none. Uh, non-profitable to something somebody that he could use somehow if he filled him up with the right kind of revelation to be able to use to help somebody else so my struggle is not in my own self-identity but my struggle is in the lack of revelation of who I am in Christ and when I think I know a little something come here, come here, come here sit right there Y'all just going to bear with me this morning. Is that all right? When I think I know something, because now I got three degrees, and I'm working on number four. And, 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 and you know, and, and I, I got a little look about me. I got a little, I'm wearing a little different. I'm driving a little different. I can talk a little bit more intelligent than I could 20 years ago. Y'all help me somebody. I, I can go into places that they wouldn't even open the door for me before. But now, 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 when I think I'm getting ready to stand up and do something significant, I get pushed back down. I'm thinking, what is this? Wait a minute. What, what, what is this, this Murphy's Law? You know, what, what, what is this? Every time I, I get pushed back down. And I'm not understanding. Somebody help me. Am I, am I in the wrong church? Do I have the wrong pastor? Have I married the wrong woman? Am I married to the wrong man? Am I going to the wrong school? Am I just doing it wrong? No. You are on a wheel. You are on the wheel of the master. Oh, my God. And the Bible says... That the clay was marred in the hand of the of the potter. In other words, <laughs> when it's time for you to get up, I'm going the master gonna lift you up. He gonna get you out here. He gonna turn you around. He gonna set your feet on solid ground. He gonna tell your enemies to be careful. Because he knows who he is now. He knows that he's a vessel of great danger to the devil, but great glory to me. So when it looked like I was mashing him down because he wasn't doing right, I was actually putting on him the things that he needed. I was putting in him the things that he was going to have to have before I could send him out into the world. So he made, again, another vessel. (laughs) <laughs> as seemed good to the potter to make it. Stand to your feet. Many of us don't understand. I can't dare say, I dare say that I'm still trying to figure it out. Mm. I want to be used by God. I know you do too. And yet, when I think, when I think, Brother Dave, when, when, when I think that I'm on the right path, All of a sudden, I get pulled back and I think, well, the devil is on my track. Well, the 
If he's on your track, just turn around and put him under your feet. That's all I'm saying. So it, stop giving him something that doesn't belong to him. He does not have the power to hold you back. The Bible says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Who being in the form of God didn't think it was robbery to be equal with God, but considered himself of no reputation. I consider myself of no value except what the Holy Ghost has put on the inside of me. But let me tell you something before you leave here today. There is more inside of you than you have allowed to come out of you. And the devil would love nothing for you other than you to be quiet and sit back and be a timid little Christian. If you want to be a timid Christian, go to another church. If you want to be a quiet Christian, you're in the wrong place. But you need to be a Christian and a believer and a disciple that will put the devil on the run. He'll get mad when you wake up in the morning. He will try to shut you down. He'll try to steal your mind. He'll try to cause you to somehow or another doubt that God is the one running stuff in your life. If he can convince you of that, he got you. And we, we need to repent of thinking that somehow or another, I just ain't it because I'm a woman. I ain't saying you thinking that. I'm using you as an example. I'm just a woman. I, I, didn't, I didn't complete this. I didn't go to Harvard. I, who cares? Don't nobody care but the devil. We read in Hebrews that for this, by this action and for this cause, he brought many sons unto glory. In other words, when I walk around, I should look like Jesus. I should sound like Jesus and act like Jesus. I should be able to cause the person that I'm standing in front of to see something greater than what they see in me. So I tell them, don't look at me. Look not to the left or to the right, but keep your eyes on the word of God. Trust what God says to you. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands to the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Ah, tell our soul. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. You know, I, I, I've said time and time again, and I had to repent for this. Because I, I might have confused somebody, and my job is not to confuse you, it's to give you greater understanding. Help you build on what you already know and add to it. You know, I get it. Life point is a tough place. And that's what I've said. That's what I've said. But Lord, forgive me. Because I hear the Lord say that your toughness is what identifies you in the kingdom of heaven. But listen, listen, listen. It's not just that because you're sealed with the blood of Jesus. Some of you have come here and it has, it has challenged the way you've thought about church. Oh my God. You've seen this sweaty, good looking black man standing up in front of you. You know what I'm saying? Hollering, moving around. I had somebody tell me, I can't handle you walking. You walk too much. I'm telling you, you're in the wrong place, baby. Because if I don't walk, I can't talk. My feet and my tongue are tied together divinely. You understand what I'm saying to you? But, 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 but what I hear the Lord say is, is, is listen, are, are you, listen, what, what, what makes, you say, we, we say it's a tough church. I don't mean in a bad way. I mean, you got to be, you got to be fully persuaded to be here. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I know you can go someplace where it's real easy, but they don't challenge you with the word. They don't challenge you by the spirit of God. They don't challenge you. And you can just get up and, and skip church and do all that kind of stuff. You ain't going to make it here. I, you know, but you know what the Lord said? He said it's not that, 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 that that's uniquely makes them good and all that kind of stuff because my blood is there. He said what makes it, makes it tough is that they are on the hit list of hell. Yeah. The, the devil hates it when you get up in the morning. Amen. The devil hates it when you get up in the morning. Why you think you got strife going on in your home? It ain't because you've done something bad. It's because you've done something right and you have followed the leading of the Lord and you've got to trust the Lord with all your might. Yeah. Yeah. My God, he's going to bring you through. He's going to bring you through. I can guarantee it. Because God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Has he not said it? Shall he not do it? Amen. Some of y'all been standing for healing and it ain't come yet. Keep standing, baby. Don't quit yet. Blow that thing. My God, don't quit yet. Come on now. I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. I hear the sound of the coming of the Lord. It is the Lord's coming. And he is not. Oh, yeah, he's coming, baby. Oh, yeah. I know, I know, I know, I know. It's tough, man. It's tough. 
tough to get up in the morning. What am I going to say to him, God? He said, just open your mouth. I'll fill it. Mm. My God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The day, listen, the day demands, the day demands that you take a stand, that you draw a line in the sand of your life as you stand on the potter's wheel. Don't get antsy and anxious and try to fall off. Baby, because he's got plenty of clay to use, but he wants to use you. <sighs> Came here with nothing. Came here with nothing. But I get everything in exchange. He gives me everything. He gives you his son. Filled up. <laughs> No small thing, no small thing, but a large, enlarged vessel of revelational truth. My God, draw from the wells of the knowledge of what I put in you, says the Lord. Yeah. Take it, eat it, drink it, sleep it. My God, go to bed, let your face fall to sleep in the pillow, in the pillow of God's word. Amen. Last time I saw you, last time I saw you, there was something going on inside here, inside the body, inside the vessel. And that thing that has been going on, God has already divinely appointed your time for healing. And you get up every morning, defiant as it were, almost bodacious, you know how we used to use that word. No, I got too much life to live. You can't have me until I say it's time. When God says so, then you nod in agreement and say, I'm with you, God. Because at that point, everybody will rejoice at the life that you lived. And now is not the time of your departure. So put aside what they say and receive a greater revelation of who I am on the inside of you. I hear the Lord say, look at your seed. Look what you have created. And then recognize. Uh -huh. You see what I'm saying, right? Oh, the love of God that he has for you. My God, if I'm going, I'm going fighting. If you're going to push me down, I'm going to kick you while I'm falling. If you pull my hair, I'm going to bite your ear. But you ain't, I ain't going out without a fight. Enough is enough. Got people that come. God, give me your hand. I got people that come, and I'm going to visit them in the hospital, and they don't come to church. Woo! Woo! Now you draw from that what you, man of God, am I right about it? You can't go pray somebody out of the hospital who won't do the will of God during the rest of the time they are. Ask somebody, why, why do you want to be here? Well, I don't know. You might as well go on home. What you going to do with more time? Going to be Papa Hulk. Dominic Spider-Man. Lift your hands before God this morning. I could keep going. Boy, I'm so wound up. I feel like, a, I feel like one of them old, old, old rubber band planes. You know them old rubber band planes we used to have where we spin the propellers, piece of wood and piece of rubber band? Y'all know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? I feel like I'm so wound tight. Somebody let me go. I might fly off. I feel like a balloon that somebody let the air out of. But I know what I'm talking about. You got to stop. We got to stop settling for ordinary. You don't serve an ordinary God. The Bible says that the time has come. That judgment must begin at the house of God. And if judgment begins at the house of God, what shall the unrighteous do? They need to be hearing your voice. What are you saying to them? God has taken great length to put you on his wheel and keep you there and spin around and add to you and add to you and add to you and build the walls of your life up so no, no, no impurity and no unrighteousness can enter in because you are covered and sealed with the blood of Jesus. Say 
Amen. 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 Father, we thank you. We give you praise. Lift your hands. Matter of fact, just join somebody's hand. Just join somebody's hand if you would. And the Bible is not is not <clears throat> indeterminate on this fact that the choice of honor is up to you, not up to God. I want to be like 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 the woman with the alabaster box that came and, and at the feet of Jesus. She just broke it. And when she broke that box, it was more than just her breaking it to anoint his feet. That's that's and anoint him for burial. That's we that's clear. But when she broke it, it was a symbol of what she had garnered and gained in her livelihood before she came to the master. Now, those of you that know anything about the Bible, what was in that box was expensive. So much so that Judah said, Why? We could have given this to the poor. How'd she get it? She got it laying on her back and letting men do whatever they wanted to do to her. She got it because she lessened herself because she had only had understanding. She understood that if I do it this way, I have value. But when she encountered Jesus, Jesus said, didn't even, as he, as he spoke to them, and there's no record that he spoke to her directly, but she heard the word because God sent the word to her. And the spirit was already waiting on her. So much so that when she accepted the message of Jesus, it caused her to break that box, lose her livelihood, and trust the master from this day forward. I'm not advocating you quit your job on any means. I'm just telling you that what you need and I need is to allow ourselves to be broken in the presence of him who can build us up again. Father, we thank you today. The hand that we hold is a miracle, is a blessing to your kingdom. Whether I know them or not, whether I'm intimate in fellowship with them or not, doesn't matter. They are yours. They are a vessel that has been made by your hands, not our own. <laughs> and on the wheel of this life, no matter how many years that we're spinning on this wheel, God, we are still in your hands. Sometimes we are marred in your hands. Sometimes you make us into a new vessel, but it doesn't matter to us, God. We say, fill us up, Lord, until we want no more. Not just for the benefit of being full, but to spill over into the life, Lord. My cup runneth over today so that the fragrance of my life I may not like the smell I may not see the scent but I recognize that there is something that is an odor of sweet smelling savor that comes to you you created me like this so let my life be a savor and offering that blesses somebody else make me an offering 